Hey folks, welcome back. I thought what we'd start going over in the next few videos is how to get our level set up so that we can actually get our storyline pieces in place when we get to that point. But I'm also just kind of tired of looking at that same room. <laughs> so let's get started on that. We're going to be using the Photo R backgrounds and then the Infinity Blade Icelands, Grasslands, and Firelands. That photo art background is actually called Landscape Backgrounds by this guy, and it's also free. Everything we're using is free. So. But to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically delete everything in here but the floor because we're going to continue using this place as a debug room and delete everything move you down to the floor oh, you can get out of here too I'm going to set my floor to be about 2 by 2 that'll work for now we'll add in walls and everything else we need later on real quick. Delete that. I'm going to come up to file, save my current as, I'm going to call it deep, uh, debug room. In my project settings under maps and modes in the project subcategory, I'm going to set my editor startup map to my debug room and the game default map to debug room as well. But that'll change later on when we're ready to package. And then I'm going to click new level. Default. I'm going to delete that, delete that, delete that for now. I'm going to delete that. And then I'll be ready to go to my landscape submenu in the modes panel. And pick out the size of the landscape that you want. Don't use the scale. Use the number of components. See if I set this to 2 by 2, it'll change how many we got. I'm going to leave it at 8 by 8, though. And then create. And that'll put us in a landscape that we can actually edit. Oh, wait. First thing I'm going to do, just because I hate how it brightens up so much, when I'm working in it, I will go to my volumes and my place settings, find a post processing volume, and in its exposure under the lens settings, I'm going to check min brightness and max brightness and set them both to 1. No crystal. And then I'm going to scroll down and go to its infinite extent under the post-process volume settings and click that. And then we'll just get the baseline set up for it. So we'll just kind of shape it a little bit and get it started. So I'm going to set my tool strength to 0.5 and my brush size to 20, 48. And over in the edge I'm just going to hold down shift and just kind of sculpt it all down because I'm going to put the ocean over here. Games always kind of feel more open to me when they don't. Like you can, like I used to just put a raised ridge all the way around, but then it felt more enclosed, which it works, but having some ocean expanse just kind of adds some depth to it. So it doesn't have to be too deep, the water's going to go over it. Our character's not going to swim, so be tight. I'm going to make sure the edges are all down, though. So that looks good for now for that. Now in my place settings, I'll find my, it's called photo art backgrounds once you put it in. And I'm setting up a winter scene because the storyline I was going with was your village has been attacked, it's burned to the ground, and you have to fight off the intruders and then 
chase them back to their place. But I'm going to just kind of drag these around. See how nice they look? So pretty. And free. I'm just going to kind of drag these around a little bit. And you can just alt left click and then pick a different one. Right click, replace with a new one. Whoa. Make sure you grab the right portion of it though. Just kind of move them into place. Which will sculpt this up into a natural barrier to keep. Actually, that one's not that good. But right there. I'll try this one. It's kind of small, still works. Just I'll drag another one of these over and rotate it the other direction. Rotate it the other direction. And just for variation, I'm going to drag out one more. Ooh, that one's nice. And put it in place about there. That works. And one more just for right. What is happening? Oh, my mouse messes up sometimes. So, drag out one more. Okay, I'm just going to Alt duplicate. Then right click and replace selected with that. There we go. Then what I'm going to do is just kind of sculpt up the edges a little bit. Just because this will be. bit of a natural barrier with this is more background. Just gonna kind of speed through this part because I gotta go shut up some dogs. Kind of a natural barrier. It'll look better once we smooth it all out and add the texture. Just to get a character in that we can run around with, I'm going to go to my third person blueprint folder, untick that, go to my blueprints, drag out my player BP. Oh, this place might be a bit big. When you first drag it out, you'll have to scroll to the bottom and find auto possess player under the pawn submenu and set it to player zero. That way, when you drop it into play, it's that one. All right. This is my second time recording the landscape one because I, uh, I recorded a full hour long one and then I realized, oh, maybe I should split it up into sections. So the only other thing I've done to the player is at the very end, I've right clicked and selected spawn sound attached. And this was to add some background music because in the fantasy orchestral pack, which is also free, they have this really nice one called the Elven Realm which works really well for the snow environment I was going to set up. 
So I've just selected that. Go in and hit this little arrow and it applies it. You want to attach it to the mesh. This is right at the end of the begin play in our character initialization where we set up their HUD and the interact radius. Right at the end of that, you want to just off this mesh, just drag off like that, drag off like that. And pretty much all there is to it. And then set the volume multiplier. I think 0.5 was good. And then when you drop into play, now you've got background music. So that you're not just running around a silent area the whole time. So we'll add in more sound effects later, like for her to grunt when she's jumping, when she's hit, etc. But for now, this looks decent. A good start to the landscape. So we'll pick it up in the next one, where we'll add in the materials. And we'll do some more sculpting just to kind of draw out more natural looking shapes, etc. Add the water. But for now, that's it. So thanks for dropping by.